Drive Free finally returns and one of its main leading figures is a knight that descends from the sky. Hey Grafathers, welcome back to another set review video and it's been a while since we did one of these type of videos and we're gonna start quite big because for the next coming set reviews for the next stage extra booster set we've got a lot of cards and ground to cover because we not only have the set itself but also three different trial decks to incorporate within this video so for the royal paladin set review that we're gonna do today we're also gonna cover the upcoming alt mal trial deck that's just released in english format and we're gonna do the same for arsha as well as for chronojet when we cover their respective clans in the next coming days with the set review for the next stage so without further ado you guys know the drill we're gonna dive into all the cards for royal paladin within the next stage extra booster set as well as the alt mod trial deck and that means we got a lot of ground to cover so we're gonna dive straight into the set review and we're gonna start off of course with the reprints and the new triggers and we've got two reprint triggers which are two crits this is bringer of good luck epona as well as flogel and just like any other reprint trigger they're just gonna be one star as they're just generic reprints now another reprint that we've got is the draw pg which is flash shield result and this is gonna be a free star for me yes these draw pgs are very much in demand but but these type of reprints are only one per trial deck so not the best type of reprint but if you can get your hands on all three different trial decks then you get a special promo pack which contains another copy of all the three different pgs for their respective clans but in overall sight it's gonna be a free star for me then a, a new addition to the trigger lineup for these clans are a new draw trigger as well as a new heal trigger and the new draw trigger is this one which is bringer of court's favor well relga and for me it's going to be a free star card as it's a new trigger so we have more options to build our trigger lineup so that's always best interest for anybody that's trying to build new strategies and with these draw triggers we can potentially run a 12 draw strategy which was impossible till this day then the other new trigger is the new heal trigger which is healing pegasus although Though it's a new heal trigger it's gonna be a one star for me because there is no actual use in these heal triggers as we can only run for a copy so just one type of heal trigger was enough so this is basically the same as getting a reprint but with a different name and a different artwork then another new type of trigger that we got and these are really interesting are the new critical sentinel triggers and for royal paladin we have bringer of dreams balanus and these are basically a new type of sentinel card that have 30k shield on a single card this allows Dex and in this case Royal Paladin, Gear Chronicle and Neo Nectar to play a 16 crit playstyle or maybe a 12 crit playstyle without losing a lot of shield value as they can just run these sentinels and then keep up space in a great run lineup instead of filling it up with the normal sentinel perfect guard so this is an interesting addition to the sentinel lineup as well as the trigger lineup so for me this is definitely going to be a five star card as it opens up a lot of diversity in either deck building or just in trigger lineup con concepts and just the fact that we get a new type of sentinel is very interesting and promising that they might do new types of cards like this in the future as well then of course with the new set with altmal we also need a new starter for altmal and in this case that's shining knight milius and just like any other new starter it's just going to be the one star although this starter immediately has the new skill printed on the card all the other starters are rotted with the skill as well so it's basically a pallet swap so reprint so one star now another reprint that we've got and we got a bunch of these reprints is this grade one pg indestructible knight arena and it's just gonna be a one star it's a generic pg that got reprinted we already got a lot of these in circulation so it's not really that great of a reprint now we also got some new vanillas and for royal paladin we have this grade one 9k zero shield vanilla which is smithing knight Osrak. and for me it's gonna be a one star i'm not too fan of these type of vanillas so yeah probably not gonna use a lot of them then another vanilla that we've got is this grade 2 10k 10k vanilla which is knight of magnificence lucis and it's gonna be a one star for me because this is basically yet again a pseudo reprint as we already have the 10k 10k vanilla so there's not really a much need for this particular card in general now with the vanillas and the reprints and the triggers out of the way 
Let's take a look at the new VR so we have an understanding of what the direction of the new Royal Paladin is and how good certain cards in this set actually are. And the new VR for Royal Paladin is the upgraded version of Altmal as we have Aerial Divine Knight Altmal. And its two skills are Continuous of Anger Circle. If you have no face up cards in your damage zone, all of your grade 2 units get power plus 10k and shield plus 5k. And if your soul has a card with Altmal in its card name, those units get critical plus one. So this is the new direction that we're gonna see with Royal Paladin as they have more skills that work with the fact that all your damage is face down. So basically either you want to guard very aggressively or the game so you have no damage or you want to blast through all your counter blasts to activate these skills. And this particular skill is very powerful as not only does it turns all your grade twos into 10, 20k attackers just by the generic fault without even calculating their extra powers of different skills, but it also turns every normal grade 2 into a 10k interceptor or just 10k shield and this is really interesting because this skill is passive also during your opponent's turn so your grade twos are 20k during your opponent's turn so harder to remove but also the grade twos in your hand basically act as a pseudo 10k shield because the moment you place them on the guardian circle they also acquire that extra additional shield power so this is a very good offensive effect as well as defensive and the critical is just an extra addition to the skill it's relatively slow but it could come into play in certain situations as definitely as we're going to see with some other cards in this list that we see with the new support wave for royal palette but Altma also has a second ability, which is Act on Vanguard Circle once per turn, cost Counter Bless 1, Soul Bless 1, call up to 1 Grade 2, each from your deck and drop zone to the regular circle and shuffle your deck. So this is yet again another superior call effect, but not only do we get a grade two from the deck, we also get something from the drop zone, which is really, really good because this allows us to be very effective with our toolbox as we can run two offs and one offs because even if they get retired, we can just keep recalling them back from the drop zone. And the fact that we also soul bless basically allows us to get the grade two that we write on our grade two turn back onto the field. So if we are forced to ridden a very powerful grade 2 that has a really good rearguard skill don't worry as we can just get it back into the field thanks to aerial divine knight altmal's main ability and this counter blast can also set up for his main passive ability as it can allow you to counter blast the last counter blast that you have available or it can maybe go into a combo play where you can even force out more counter blasts if we need to so Overall, a very versatile unit, and we're going to see with all the other grade 2 and just generic support that this card is really, really powerful. Now, with the new VR discuss, let's take a look at the generic support that can be splashed in any type of build or some budget builds, but aren't of the best value in general. And we're going to start off with a very interesting grade 1, because I believe we got some Shadow Paladin support as well, as we've got Aggregate Angel. This grade 1, 5 Okay, unit. Very interesting that they went for this direction as seen as this is a Royal Paladin card. And its ability is Continuous of Record Circle. If you have 6 units, this unit gets power plus 15k. So if you have a full board, it becomes a 20k booster. I'm not really a fan of this and I'm gonna be honest I'm gonna give it one star not only is it a 5k body so it's really awkward to write this if you're forced to do that but also its condition is really annoying to get off because you need to have a full board and sure with the new VR with Altmal it's much easier to do so but why would you run this grade one if you have so many other better cards to run like there is no actual reason to run this grade one over any particular card in general so that's why it's only gonna be a one star for me then another very generic grade one is this grade one pioneer knight apathicus and this is grade one from the trial deck and you're gonna see it with the skill that is very basic as its skills continues a very good circle during the battle it attacked a vanguard this unit gets power plus 3k so when it attacks it becomes an 11k attacker quite awkward numbers as 11k attacker on a grade one doesn't really make some good numbers with other grade ones that might boost it unless you have a 7k grade one so that means you need to also run some other awkward units to make a 18k column not the best numbers it's also not really that great there are so many better options, so definitely a one star. This is just a trial deck filler card. Then we got another interesting grade one that is Knight of Bright Light Crayota, and her ability is on a regular circle. When placed, if you have five or more units, cost counter plus one and draw a card. So we've got another draw engine on our hands here, but we already got so many better cards that actually can do her skill 
but better. And two cards that come to mind are Night Squire Ellen and Little Sage Marin. Both of these cards will count the less one to draw a card, but also they give a little bit power and they allow you to superior call or basically function with superior calling or just calling in general in Marin's case. So both of them are also 8k, 10k shield. So they have basically a better skill, a easier skill and just more value in general. So that's why I only can give this card a two star rating because it is somewhat useful because it's a draw engine, but they're just better cards does what this card does. Now we get to some interesting grade twos. And the first one I wanna talk about is Sage of Eminent Virtue Tion. And this grade two is a 9K grade two, but its skill will make up for those situations as its skills are continuous record circle. If you have five or less units, this unit cannot attack and cannot be attacked. So basically, if you're up against your opponent, you don't want them to keep retiring grade twos because you want to keep your grade twos on the board with Altmal, then this can be a great way if you just keep one back row unit empty or you intercept with the other column so they cannot no longer attack into this thing. The only problem is if you cannot fill out your field, this thing can also not attack. So that's quite annoying. But its 9k body is made up with its second ability because its second ability is continuous or record circle. During your turn, this unit gets power plus 10k. So that makes it a 19k attacker. And with Altmaul's extra power, that's a 29k attacker. This is probably one of the highest grade 2 power that it can generate on its own because most grade 2s in Royal Paladin can only generate an additional 5k power, can turn themselves into 15k attacker. This can turn itself into a 19k attacker, which is a lot higher and can probably help you overcome certain magic numbers. So for that, I can give it a 2-star rating as its restrictions are quite annoying and there aren't a lot of scenarios where it can be useful, but it could be an interesting tech option for Altma as you can just tech multiple great tools in a build as you can just superior call them from the drop zone and deck. And this might be an interesting pick for a one of or two of in a Altma deck to make better or higher columns. Then another interesting great two is Sage of Contemplation Tedon. And it's once again a 9K great two and its ability is act on rear circle. Once per turn, cause counter plus one and soul plus one, and this unit gets power plus 15k until the end of turn. So what I just said with Tion, where it was the strongest grade two that we had with its own skill, this is actually even stronger as it gets an increase of 15k. So it's 24k attacker on its own. The only issue with this is, is that its cost is a way over costed for what it does. A counter plus a soul blast for just an increase of power 15k is nowhere near as actually good. It does help with blasting through your counter blast for alt miles effect, but there are so many better things you can do for a counter blast than just giving 50k power. You can superior call, you can give more uh, power to multiple units, you can set up soul and draw a lot of cards, and that gives you way more value than does just this one off instance of a 50k power. So, for me, this is gonna be a one star card that's probably never actually gonna be run. Then, another grade two, which is pretty familiar, as we've seen a card that's basically the same as this, but in a grade three form, as we have Stabbing Knight Regal. And the reason why I said that is because of her skill that's all a rigor circle when a card is put into the drop zone from your soul, this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. This is the same skill that we've seen on Explosive Knight Palamedes that was the great free support card for the Soul Saver engine or the Soul Saver deck. This is a grade 2 version that does the same thing as generating a lot of power. But I do think this is a bit more generic and more useful in different Royal Paladin decks as a lot of Royal Paladin decks have Soul Blasting skills, especially the new Altmal deck. So there is more used for actually getting this unit more multiple power and running a grade two instead of a grade three is always a little bit better because grade threes tend to clock up your deck if you run too many of them and this as a grade two can just be incorporated in multiple strategies within royal Paladin as they also have the whole toolbox option available to them so i think this is a really solid card and i want to give it a three star rating as it can be splashed in any type of budget builds as well as just actual competitive decks where they want to have a bit more power as this ability does stack so if you can change some multiple soul blasting skills it allows you to ram in with some hard hitting attacks then from the grade twos we go to some generic grade threes and first off we have this one from the trial deck which is unite read dragon and its ability is auto finger to record circle when played 
place from hand calls Soldiers 1 and you may call a Grade 2 card from your hand to the rearguard circle. If you called draw a card. So basically this is unplaced or unright. You Soldiers 1, you call something from hand and you draw a card. And this is somewhat similar to an unplaced Soul Blast draw. That's actually a lot of good value you get for a Soul Blast as typically a Counter Blast is similar to a draw. So it's actually pretty decent. And it is a Vanguard as well as Rearguard Circle skill so you're not forced to write this as your main Vanguard unit. The only problem is for a Great 3 this is really underpowered as most of the Great 3's in your main decks and your main strategies need to do a lot more than just draw a card. Sure, it allows you to spare a call unit from your hand, so it can proc certain skills of Royal Palin, but those are far and few in between, so it's not that good or a good enough reason to make this an actual viable card. So for that, I can only make it a two-star card as the draw effect is nice, but not good enough to make it an actual really good card. And another supporting grade three that we've got is this double or grade three, Knight of Heavenly Spears, Aga Nips. And its ability is act on Vanguard Circle as well as Rearguard Circle. Once per turn, cause Counter plus one and Soul plus one, and two of your units get power plus 10k until the end of turn. If your damage zone has four or more cards, counter blast one. So it has the same cost as the grade two for the trial deck, which was a 9k body, but that only gives one unit itself 15k power. This gives two units plus 10k power, so that's 5k more power. But on top of that, it also allows you to potentially counter charge if you have multiple damage. So if you're on limit break four, so to speak. And that makes this card a lot more useful because that means you can give two units plus 10k power for the cost of a soul less if you time this right. And for that, I think it's a solid free star card that can be used in some budget options. Maybe somebody wants to splash in a one off of a great free if they need a bit more resources. This allows them to do that as it's also a solid rearguard unit because it doesn't have to be your main vanguard card. Then another great free which is very questionable is this great free Anabasis Header Dragon. And Anabasis Header Dragon has the following skill. On a rearguard circle, when your vanguard attack hits, cost counter plus one and this unit gets power plus 10k and critical plus one until the end of turn. So 10k power and a critical for the cost of a counter blast isn't that great of a value, but it's okay. But the problem here is, is the fact that it's behind a vanguard on hit effect. So this unit doesn't need to hit, your vanguard needs to hit to give this unit the extra effect. That's really annoying and probably not gonna happen in most cases, especially if they see this card. They're not gonna take the damage as it gives a crit to a rear guard, which basically forces them to also guard that attack as well. So there's probably bigger chances they're gonna take your vanguard attack, depending on what the scenario is, of course. But I only can give this card a one star. It's not a great, great free to run in most cases, especially as well as budget builds, as there are just better cards that just give you value on a consistent basis. This doesn't really do that for you. Then we get to two cards which are really interesting as we get a new mechanic or basically a mechanic from a different clan in Royal Paladin as Royal Paladin gets access to bouncing effect. And the first card I want to talk about is this great one, Lunar Crescent Knight Phalax. And its ability is auto vanguard to rearguard circle. When it attacks or boosts, cost soul plus one and return a rearguard in another column to your hand. And this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. So the cost is a soulless and bouncing unit in another column to give this unit 5k power. But if I'm gonna be really honest, the cost of bouncing a unit to the back to your hand is actually the main effect what makes this card really good. Because the fact that you can bounce cards back to your hand allows you to be very aggressive in your early game. If you write this thing, you can slam down another grade one, attack with the grade one, then attack with this and bounce the grade one back to your hand and negate your opponent's ability to bash into that rear guard to damage deny you or just minus you another card if you hit a defensive trigger. Also, it allows you to be a bit more aggressive with cards because you can, in a mid game, maybe call down some triggers to make some better numbers. And then at the end of the battle, just return the trigger back to your hand and also increase this unit with another 5k. So it could potentially increase your Vanguard attack or a rearguard column with another power that could potentially hit over defense trigger or a magic number. So overall, this is a really really good card as it opens up a lot of aggressive plays it opens up more options as well as some potential combo plays or abusive nature of on um, effects because you can 
place on units, use your unplace effects, bounce them back, and then the next turn, place them again. And certain unplace effects are really, really powerful, as you're going to see in a moment here. So for me, this is going to be a very, very confident four-star card. This is a really good card. You're not going to use it as much because the Soul Blast can be quite taxing, but hitting this thing once or maybe twice in the entire game, and especially in the early game with the right target, can set up for your mid to late game quite effectively and this could be a re really game changing card if used right. Then another card that's similar to this grade 1 Phalax is this grade 3 Knight of Longbow Malcolm and its ability is on the rearguard circle when it attacks cost counter plus 1 and return a rearguard in another column to your hand and this unit gets power plus 15k until the end of the battle. So instead of a soul bless this is a counter bless and instead of plus 5k power it's plus 15k power. So you would say this is a much better improvement than Phalax. And yes you can say that however I'm still only going to give it two stars and the reason why i'm going to give it two stars is because one it costs a counter bless so that's way more of an impactful resource. Yes the new royal paddling will rely less on counter blast and has way more taxing on the soul but phalox can also be used in the non-current builds it can also be used in future builds and royal paladin will probably rely on counter blast more heavily than soul in a generic sense so this will probably have a less of future potential but another big reason why this is a two-star card is because it's on a great free your great free needs to be your big boss monster plays your big finisher plays or your main units that come that that surrounds your entire engine or your strategy this great free doesn't really do that it sure can allow you to be a bit more aggressive or use on place effects more aggressively but you much rather want to do that as early as possible like on your grade one or grade two turn because on your grade three turn you want to do your big plays and phalox can enable that right from turn one this card doesn't do that the moment that this comes into play it's way too slow so that's why it's only going to be two star instead of phalax with the four star card now talking about cards that allow you to bounce cards let's talk about a card which is super generic but can also be abused with this engine as we have this great one triple r laurel knight cecilius and this is basically the new great free search of royal royal Pelin. as its skills are continuous of finger to rigor circle during your turn if you have no face up cards in your damage zone this unit gets power plus 5k so if you went second you can attack first that means you can ride this thing or call to the rigor circle and it's a 13k attacker which is really solid but it also has a second ability which is auto finger to rigor circle when placed from your hand Look at the five cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one great free from among them and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck. And if you put a card, discard a card from your hand. So this is a new great free searcher. And the reason why I say it's very abusable with something like Velux is you can place it on your turn one if you went second. It's a 13k attacker, but you also get to check top five for a great free. Then you attack with it, then you attack with Phalax, it also becomes a 30k attacker, you bounce back the Sicilius, and next turn you can slam Sicilius down again to search again for the top 5 for another potential alt mal. So that's a really good consistency engine you have available to you in the early game that basically only costs you one soul as the search for Sicilius is basically free. So that's a really interesting combo that you have available to you, but Sicilius in general it's an obvious 5 star because it it's super generic it's going to be run in like every royal paladin deck that can get his hands on this card because searching your great freeze is always good no matter your strategy you play then from the generic support we go into the archetype support and we've got two very interesting blaster support for the whole messianic lord blaster deck and the first one we're going to talk about is this grade 2 clearness angel and its ability is on a record circle when placed from hand if you have five or more units Cost, counter plus one, search a deck for up to one card with Blaster in its card name, call to the rigor circle, and shuffle your deck. So what it basically entices is if you have the entire board set up, except for one blaster, you can slam this card to the field and change it into the missing blaster for a counter blast. And that's actually pretty solid. We have other searchers that we basically played into the blaster deck to get more consistency as they could substitute themselves for other blasters but the problem is with most searchers that we had available
available right now was that they were limited to the grade 2 lineup. This can also search out the grade 1 blaster, so that's a little bit more consistent. And the only issue is that it's an unplaced effect from hand and it's a 9k grade 2, but the 9k doesn't really matter because it's basically a substitute card for any other blaster for what it potentially can fetch out. So overall, I think it's a solid 3 star card. It helps with the consistency of the deck, but the problem of course arises with running non-blaster cards. How consistent is it to then get to the actual blaster cards themselves. Then another grade two support blaster card that we've got is Rising Knight Beltan. This is a really interesting card as its skills on our regular circle. At the end of the battle, it attacked a Vanguard, cost Soul Blast one, return any number of cards with blaster in their card stem from your regular circle or drop zone to your deck and shuffle it. If you return a total of three or more cards, put this unit into your soul and draw two cards. So in general sense, this gives you more resources as you can shuffle blasters from your drop zone back into your deck as well as putting this into the soul so it basically pays for its own cost and then you can draw two cards which is actually pretty solid because those two draws can potentially be new blasters that you can call into the field next turn to may potentially activate messianic but there is another really interesting thing this card allows us to do and that's what we all wanted to do with messianic in the first place with its whole when you dry check a blaster call to the rigor circle so we can potentially multi-tech the problem is with that skill is that you need to call to open the rigor circle this card allows you to open up those circles as you can bounce one blaster from the field so the other left front row rigor circle that potentially already attacked and then this unit will go to the soul so you basically open up the two front row record circle so if you then drive check two blaster cards with your messianic or blaster that's two extra attacks you just generated so this particular grade two allows you to multi-attack within the blaster deck which is actually pretty interesting so for that i'm gonna give it a three star rating yes it doesn't help you with the overall consistency of getting the blaster board live but it does give you more options and more strategies to incorporate within the messianic lord blaster deck itself so that's really really interesting then another archetype support card that we've got is this great one torrental knight at griff and this is not for the blaster deck but surprisingly enough this is for the alfred deck as this great one has the skill on a regular circle when plays look at three cards from the top of your deck reveal any number of cards with alfred in their card names from among them and put them into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order so this is a check top three and get a potential plus one plus two or plus three for free that's good value but the problem is and the reason why i'm gonna give this card a one star is what's actually the point and what are you actually trying to do because your targets are alfred early king of knights alfred and Mon sanctuary monarch sanctuary alfred or sanctuary monarch alfred or what the name of that last vr is but you can get those free alfred first off the top three is a very low chance of actually hitting one and significantly lower to hit two. So in general sense, you're either going to hit zero or you're going to hit one. So that's okay because it's a free plus. But what, are you, what actually are you trying to do? Because the Alfred deck itself doesn't really do anything of, anymore because it's quite outdated and this great one isn't going to help that build at all to make it more competitively viable so yeah for that i'm only going to give it one star because even if you really want to run a main core focus alfred deck like do you really want to play this great one because it's an 8k that doesn't really do anything for the main strategy it doesn't draw you into your great twos or your great ones it doesn't give power to the field it doesn't help with your blaster blades in any capacity so yeah I'm not really a fan of this card in general actually now with the archetype support cards out of the way we're going to take a look at cards that interact in the same strategy or in the same ba ballpark of the new alt mall and i'm basically referring to that these cards all have the condition of having all your counter blasts face down and we're going to start off with a great one that is melodious angel and this six gate grade one has the skill act on regular circle once per turn cost counter blast two draw a card and if you have no face of cards in your damage zone, counter charge one. So counter plus two for drawing card is really, really bad. 6k grade one, also really, really bad. But then if you have no damage face up, you counter charge one so that counter plus, so that skill actually becomes a counter plus one drawing a card. Is that good? No. 
That's not good at all, and that's the re- and for that reason, I'm gonna give it one star. And, and the reason why it's not good is because not only is it way too overcast, because first you need to be able to pay the two counter blasts to get the draw off. You're also sitting on a low base power, so calling it makes no good columns. Riding it re- is really awkward. But also, the fact that it counter charge you can really screw you over if you're not timing this right. Because if you don't have another counter blast skill afterwards, this particular skill, then you're not having everything face down, so all your other skills won't activate like your passive skill of Altma. Then from the grade 1, we go to a very interesting grade 3, as we have Pensive Intellectual Leonard. And its skills all over the regular circle, when it attacks, if you have 6 units, and you have no face-up cards in your damage zone, cost Soul Blast free, and discard a card from your hand. And until the end of the battle, your opponent can only call Sentinels from his or her hand to the Guardian Circle. Okay, this is really interesting because this is the reverse guard restrict. Instead of forcing our opponent to not be able to guard with perfect guards, this basically forces them to guard with the sentinel, either they cannot guard at all. Is this a good skill? I honestly am not really sure because yes, the guard restrict is actually pretty good because that means your opponent has only four cards in their entire deck where they can potentially guard this attack. So if you've already seen them using one or two sentinels, it's very likely they cannot actually guard this attack if they still have a quite sizable chunk of their deck left because the chance of them drawing into those last PGs or sentinels is really, really slim. But the cost and the hoops you need to jump through are nowhere near to make this skill actually viable. Having a full board is already quite questionable but doable. But then you also need to have used all your counter blasts, and then you need to use free soul for to act for this skill to activate the skill at all. That's a lot, and for that I can only give it a one star as it's not good. It, this is not a good great free to play, and also has not a force marker, so riding it is also really bad, even though it has a Vanguard skill. But it's so cumbersome to actually get this skill off. But it could be a potential finisher if used correctly. Then from grade 3 we've got another grade 1 which is kind of okay because we have Knight of Secret Plan What? And What's ability is continuous of record circle. If you have no face of cards in your damage zone, this unit gets intercept and can intercept from the back row. So it is a nice 10k interceptor. This is great for early game plays as you can slam it down to be very aggressive against your opponent if you went second. And then immediately the following turn you can intercept it away before you get the first damage so you can use its ability. And in the late game you can potentially use this, but in the mid to late game you actually this card becomes useless as you're gonna see in a moment here that you're not gonna use your great ones all that much because great twos are much much better so for all that i can only give this card a two star rating because even in the generic sense it's quite mediocre at best it's not the greatest of skills it's also in the 7k body grade one so yeah not the greatest cards to get your hands on in royal paladin then another great one that we've got is this great one headwind knight salim and its abilities are continuous or regular circle if you have no face of cards in your damage zone this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's cards abilities so it gets the resist ability which is nice because that means your opponent has harder time to remove this card, especially if it's in the back row and you're up against Kagero and they want to ride something like Berserk Dragon and this is the only thing that you have on the board, they cannot remove it. So that's actually pretty good. But also the second ability, which is on a regular circle, at the end of the battle that it attacked or boosted, cause discard a card from your hand and return one of your rear guards to your hand. So this is similar to Phalex, that it bounced something to your hand, only instead of a Soul Blast or a Counter Blast in the case of the Great Free, this is a discard. And the upside for the higher cost of a discard is that it can bounce any card. It doesn't have to be necessarily in a different column like the other two cards that we discussed earlier in this video. So, is this a good skill? In my honest opinion, not really. It's basically trading a card from the field to your hand, and because you're doing that, you're eliminating the fact that it's a good way to be more aggressive. There's no real value of now calling down triggers or useless great ones to be very aggressive, because now you need to sacrifice another card to actually get that card back to your hand. So the whole, so that basically defeats the whole purpose of actually calling multiple cards in your early game to the field. And the resist effect is nice, but not good enough to carry these cards. So for that, I'm only going to give it two stars as 
it's probably mainly going to be running the budget builds or in specific instance where you want to rely on more bounce effects but currently we don't have good enough cards to abuse this to its max capacity now with the grade ones and the questionable grade for you discuss let's take a look at the main grade twos which are going to be the backbone of this new deck and we're going to start off with a really good grade two which is absolute blade knight liverot and liverot has the following ability on a vector burger circle one place from hand costs countless one search your deck for up to one grade two card Call to an open rigor circle and shuffle your deck. If you have no face of cards in your damage zone, you may soul blast for this cost. So this straight out of the bat is a four star card for me. This is an upgraded version of Conjurer of Mithril because not only is its cost basically cheaper, it's on the 10k body and its cost can change because it can potentially be turned into a soul blast if you use all your counter blasts, which is really good. The only problem that I have with this card is that for one, it needs to be placed from hand, so you can probably not combo off of it by spear calling this thing from your deck and then go into something else. And you need to call the grade two to an open rigor circle. So that means multi-attacking with this card in the potential future is probably impossible to, unless we rely on these bounce effects like Felux and Celine, but that probably ask way more from the player to actually get value of these effects. So that's the reason why I want to give it a four star card. But don't get me wrong, this card is insanely powerful. Just fetching any other grade two by calling this to the board allows you to be very aggressive just on your grade two turn because riding this or calling this and you can basically swarm your front row. And if you have something like a Phalanx in the behind, then you can also bound it, bounce it back to reuse its effect again. So there's a lot of options available for this grade two in particular. And the fact that it can change this cost to a Soul Blast allows you to get value of this card throughout the entirety of the game. Even if your opponent damage denies you or you start blasting through your counter blast with other skills. So this is a really, really solid card for any Royal Paladin deck out there. Then another grade two, which is insanely powerful, is this grade two Starlight Violinist. And its ability is continuous on Rearguard Circle. If you have no face of cards in your damage zone, all of your grade twos on the Rearguard Circle get boost and can intercept from the back row. And this is the reason why I said that what was basically outdated with this set or in particular is because of this card. It, turn, it turns all your grade twos into boosting units that can also intercept from the back row. If we combine this card with the new VR Aerial Divine at Altmal, then all our grade twos become 20k attackers on base power. They become 10k shield interceptors. They become 20k boosters. And they also become 10k interceptors that can intercept from the back row. So if we fill out the board with grade twos and this card is on the field and Aerial Divine that is on the fingered circle and we have used all our counter blasts, and that means we can create 40k columns on the left and right side columns and we have 50k shields in the form of interceptors by the iteration of 10k. So that's a lot of offensive power as well as a lot of shield power. And with Aerial Divine and Altmal being able to superior call one from the drop zone and run from the deck each and every single turn allows you to sustain this for quite a long time. So this, in my honest opinion, is a solid 5-star card that builds the new deck, but not only that, this card can be incorporated in whatever other type of Royal Pennant deck as any actual Royal Pennant build is going to run multitudes of grade 2s, has grade 2 superior call effects, and is going to use a lot of counter blasts. So this can just be tagged in, in any type of build, no problem, and will give you a lot of value. So this is a really, really solid card for Royal Pennant. Then, interesting enough, this card is so good, it got a separate dedicated searcher in the likes of Hope Song Angel. As this grade 2 has the skill Act and Record Circle, once per turn, cost counter plus 1, search your deck for up to 1 Starlight Violinist, call to the record circle and shuffle your deck. So why would you run this particular card over something like Livera that can search out any other grade two? The reason for that is very simple. This is an act ability, meaning you can use it turn after turn if this thing stays on the board. But not only that, you need to waste all your counter blast if you hope to activate Starlight Vinylness and also the new Aerial Divine and Alma. If you cannot blast through all your counter blast, then all your skills won't really activate and you have a bunch of vanillas on the board. 
this grade two allows you to use up one extra counter blast to hopefully put every counter blast face down and that's the reason why this is actually a pretty solid card so for that i'm gonna give it a three star rating because it supports what Starlight Violinist wants to do, and it also supports what the new Royal Paladin Altmod deck actually tries to achieve. And this is just one extra card that helps you to do that, while at the same time builds more units onto the board. Because what you can do is call Liver Rod from your hand, then Superior call it Hope Song Angel, and then use Hope Song Angel to then Superior call a Starlight Violinist, and then use your main vanguard skill aerial divine and alma to spare call another grade two from the drop zone and another grade two from your deck and it costs you three counter blasts and one soul blast and one card from hand to build an entire board full of grade twos that is basically 50k shield power you just generated so if your opponent gives you free counter blasts you can do that combo to activate all those valuable skills. So that's why Hope Song Angel is actually a pretty viable card in Royal Paladin. Now with Hope Song Angel out of the way, we get to the last couple of cards and these are the big, big hard hitting cards. And the first off we have this grade two, Counter Offensive Knight, Suleiman. And this card has the following abilities, Auto and Vanguard Circle, when placed, look at the seven cards on the top of your deck, call up to one card with all bonus card name to the rigor circle and shuffle your deck. So this allows you to check top seven and get an alt mount to the rigor circle. So this could fetch out the trial deck alt mount, blue sky knight alt mount, which is a really good rigor that can potentially be a 28k beater, or we can get the new VR aerial divine at alt mount that's just a 13k beater. So getting those great free onto the board is really nice because it's a free plus, it's an extra attack, but why do you want to superior call a grade three on your grade two turn to the rigor circle while you actually rather want to have them in your hand so you can write them next turn? Well, we do have some cards like Felux that can superior, that can bounce it back to the hand, which is actually pretty solid, but that's another card that we need to use. We don't have to rely on Felux because Suleiman is a Lunar Crescent Knight Felux in itself because its second ability is auto Vanguard the rigor circle when it attacks, cause Soul Blast 1, return a rear guard in another column to your hand, and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the battle. It has the identical skill to Felux himself. So what this card allows you to do single-handedly is check top 7, call an Altmaul, you can attack with the Altmaul, then attack with this thing and bounce the Alma back to your hand and you have your right target for next turn. That's an incredible consistency engine that also allows you to pressure in the early game. And especially if you can hit off the blue sky and Alma, because if you have used all your counter blasts, that Alma is a 28k beater. A 28k beater on your grade two turn is really, really good. So that on its own allows me to give this card a definite five star rating. This is a really good consistency engine and is going to be run four off in any alt mod deck because it increases your right consistency and it allows you to be very aggressive in the early game. Both those things are very valuable in Royal Paladin or just a force deck in general that can only dish out free attacks. You want to be as aggressive as you can and this card allows you to do that. Now speaking of alt mods, Let's take a look at the second Alma because we already discussed the Aerial Divine Alma. So let's look at the new Trial Deck Alma, Blue Sky Knight Alma. And its skills are continuous of anger to rigor circle. During your turn, if you have no face up cards in your damage zone, this unit gets power plus 15k. So this is what I meant with it can become a 28k attacker. It can be a 28k rigor attacker or a vanguard attacker. And Suleiman really helps to shine out the power of this card because Yes, it can be that attacker on the Vanguard Circle, but you much rather want to sit on Aerial Divine at all now because it scales much, much better. And the reason for that is because if we look at the second ability of all now, we have the skill Auto Vanguard Circle once per turn, cost counter plus one, and discard a card from your hand, search your deck for up to two grade two cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So this card allows you to search out two great twos from your deck, where Aerial Divine and Altmile allows you to search one from your deck and one from your drop zone, which is arguably a little bit better for consistency's sake. But this Altmile helps you with compressing your deck and just filtering in general. But the interesting thing about this Altmile in particular is that it searches grade two cards. So it can search you for grade two units, but it can also search you out grade two order cards. Currently we have only one target and that's the Power Rise Elixir, 
but with future order cards on the horizon, we might get some actually really, really solid targets for this particular skill in general. So in general, all my, my honest opinion is a solid five star card. Yes, it's definitely weaker than the VR, which is obvious because the VR is the main unit, but this all about allows you to get more value out of your Suleiman because this is a much better rearguard unit, but this card also synergizes quite nicely with what Royal Paladin wants to do in general because it searches out grade twos out of the deck and it gets them to your hand instead of superior calling them. So cards with unplaced effects from hand, like Liverot, for example, synergize much better with this particular Alma than what we've seen with Aerial Divine and Alma. And with the way that how this card works, it's a much better card to implement in other strategies, like with the upcoming Majesty Lord Blaster deck, where this Alma can actually be a supporting great free for that engine because you get the cards to your hand and if you want particular great tools in your hand to save them for a next turn for a combo play, then keeping them in your hand instead of just outright superior calling them is much, much better. So with this Altmau discussed, we can go back to the new VR, which is Aerial Divine and Altmau. And we basically already discussed about this Aerial Divine and Altmau with all the other cards within this video. And this card is insane. It's really powerful. But if we combine it with the correct cards like Hope Song Angel and Starlight Violinist and something like Liverot and Suleiman and with the Trial Deck Altmau, this card becomes bonkers good. And for that, this card is definitely a five star card in my opinion. This, the Just the raw value this card gives to Royal Pattern is insane. The fact that all our grade twos become super grade twos that are 20k attackers, 10k interceptors, can boost and can intercept from the back row and potentially have a crit which is really nuts. And that crit can be given on the first right turn if you write this thing on your first grade three turn because we have ways to soul charge cards from the deck. So if we are a little bit lucky with our soul chargers and we get an alt into the soul before we write into this thing or the turn that we write it, we can get the full skill active, which is really interesting and potentially very powerful. So as we've seen in this video, there is a lot of interesting things that we've got for Royal Paladin. We've got some archetype supports for blasters as well as Alfred and a lot of generic stuff, which a lot of is not so good and junky, but with that said, we've got a very interesting new approach for Royal Paladin with the whole counter blasting effect where you want to have your whole damage zone face down, which is an interesting take on what you could say on a new brave aspect where you just want to go all out offensive. But this is probably a lot more sustainable as you don't have to put your hand in a deadly situation. And of course, the new alt miles are insanely powerful and also very versatile, especially the trial that great free alt mile that can be splashed in any other deck that just utilizes grade two and it's Royal Paddling. So they're gonna utilize grade twos. So that's really, really good value you're gonna get for the longevity. And that's the same case for this Alma with the new VR, Aero Divine and Alma, because if we get more grade twos that are going to be very powerful, interesting, that means that this VR is gonna get more powerful and more powerful as the game progresses. And that basically rounds up everything for this set review. This was a long one, but as I explained at the beginning from the video, we also got a lot of cards to talk about because of the set as well as the trial deck. So with that said, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this new support way for Royal Pattern. Are you happy with the new Altma cards? Are you happy with the new direction of the playstyle that we have with this super counter blast heavy acceleration gameplay that is the new Brave? Or are you a little bit disappointed that we didn't get more support cards for other archetypes like only with the fact that we only got two blaster cards and one Alfred card and nothing for blaster blade or uh, Genslot in general. So let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. As always, this video has been brought to you by lovely patrons over patreon.com slash Fangit Insider. You guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then you can simply do that by heading over to patreon.com slash Fangit Insider and become a patron today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap and I'll see you guys in the next one.